Hello everybody, welcome back to my little corner of the internet where I will talk about the stories of my life, my work both as a comic book author and translator, my cats Hey Hey and Serengeti, and the occasional movie, book or TV series reviews and recommendations, as well as some rants if the feeling hits. And boy has the feeling hit this time, because I do have a rant for you. Because, you see, with the popularity of my voice, Moon Knight, growing thanks to the amazing series that we just got this year, and seriously, Disney, Marvel, where is season two? We need more of Oscar Isaac, great acting as Mark, Steven, and of course, Jake. <clears throat> I said, thanks to the growing popularity of Moon Knight, there has been a very obvious and growing tendency to create certain fanon and head canons that are, to put it bluntly, quite problematic, given the fact that Moon Knight is a superhero who lives with a mental health condition, namely Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DAD, who also happens to be Jewish and, as far as the MCU version goes, Latin American, given that his whole family is portrayed by Latin American actors and Oscar Isaac himself is from Guatemala. So yeah, we're going to talk about those fanon facts that should not be widespread and the reason why the people who favors them should think twice before putting them in their fan works. Now, I am usually a very ship and let ship person, and those goes hand in hand with head cannons. You want to head cannon any character as having a definite sexuality that is not stated in the original work? Go ahead. You want to head cannon that said character has a mental condition that is not stated in canon? Be my guest. However, this always has a caveat. Do as you do, as long as you don't cause real-life damage. And with that in mind, let's talk about when Fanon goes wild. So, how do I reconcile the idea that head cannons and ships are all okay as long as you ship and let ship, with Fanon can be problematic and thus you should think twice about what you are saying? Well, that's where as long as you don't cause real-life damage comes in. Real damage is, of course, a tricky thing to explain. Obviously, if you write a story where character X is actually a serial killer who tortures their victims, you are not actually torturing anyone, nor condoning murder. Seriously, this is important. People can write about disgusting things without them actually wanting such disgusting things to happen in real life. There are a ton of reasons why this is so, but that is for a completely different video, because it's a completely different kind of worms. This is why trigger warnings are important, and before you claim that books and movies don't have trigger warnings, you are wrong. That's where reviews, genres, and age ratings come in. Hell, most true crime shows have in their intro a text warning that says that, yeah, there will be horrible things discussed within, and that's a genre where you expect horrible things to be discussed within. So no, it doesn't spoil a fic to give your readers some sort of clue as to what to expect, even if said clue is just warning dark subjects ahead. But then there is a perpetuation of certain stereotypes as if they were facts. And that's a little bit more problematic than just writing dark subjects. Why? Because then you are not saying that character X acts like this because I had canon them as a villain. But character X acts like this because they are part of this group, and thus every member of this group has this particular characteristic. And this is where I am going to focus exclusively on Moon Knight fanons, and most importantly, in MCU's Moon Knight fanons, as comics are a little bit of a different kind of worms. I have a lot of kind of worms in this video. Now, a second disclaimer I am not Jewish, nor have the ID. I have talked extensively to systems about Moon Knight and have Jewish friends who have explained to me a lot of things about what they see as good representation, bad representation, good headcanons and terrible headcanons, which I am going to try and explain here, mostly on the system's side, as that's what has caused the most troubling situations in the fandom. But I am not trying to talk over them. If you are a system and disagree with my takes, Please let me know, I am always willing to learn. On the other hand, while I am not Guatemaltecan, I am Mexican. 
That means I am Latin American and boy, I can talk about damaging Latin American stereotypes. So yeah, we are going to touch on those two. Because see, while most health canons are personal and thus pretty harmless, Fanon is when something starts becoming incredibly widespread to the point that there are people who think those facts are canon, which then do spread those bad stereotypes I talked about before. So in this case, we have three specific things that are, well, really not that good to spread around. Number one, the moon system, that is Mark, Stephen, and Jake, deserve to have separate bodies as a reward. Number two, Jake is the evil altar and has red eyes. Number three, the moon system are crazy and thus need fixing, usually by giving them separate bodies. Notice, none of them have to do with shipping. Seriously, ship and let ship people. So let's start with number one, the separate bodies one. The one I have found mostly on Slash Fanfic, but I am pretty sure it's also prevalent on Gen and Headfic, if the reader and one of the guys are a good way to judge. And thing here is, this one is just lazy writing besides being contradicted by the show itself. I am not going to say that no system ever wants to be separated, because systems are not a hype mind and each system, hell, each altar in each system can have a different opinion on the matter. Some to whom I have talked to have told me that they wouldn't mind having their own bodies temporarily, some others think it's a nightmare scenario, and I am pretty sure that means that somewhere there is a system that thinks that each of their members having their own body is a dream come true. However, Moon Knight is not part of that last group. See, as I said at the beginning, Moon Knight is one of the very rare, very few heroic de depictions of DAD. The fact that the boys are a system is an integral part of who they are, and although in the comics their plurality has been written in a spotty way, the writers of the Disney series, and Oscar Isaac as a producer and an actor, did their best to give system a good hero and a good representative that instead of shying away from their condition, learn to live with it and love it. The beginning of episode 6 completely blows the theory that they would want to be separated, given that Mark had eternal rest and happiness and decided to give it up because he wasn't there with Stephen. Even before that, in episode 5, we see how disoriented and confused he is when he realizes that Stephen is not with him in the body during the asylum and duet sequences. While we can't know Jake's feelings on the matter, given that he was seen very little, we can pretty much tell that Stephen, once he realized exactly what it meant that he and Mark are alters within a system, also doesn't want to be away from Mark. His original desire to have a separate body from Mark came from the incorrect belief that Mark was somehow possessing him. Once he comes to the realization that he and Mark belong in the body, then he is no longer wishing Mark would go away. They become a package deal, and they are happy that way. Sure, you may tell me that it's hard to write them as a system, and yes, it is. But it is part of what makes them be them. Mark, Stephen, and Jake wouldn't be them if they are not a system, so writing them in separate bodies is taking away part of what makes them special as characters. Writing them in separate bodies is reducing the moon system to Marvel's Batman. A thing that I despise too, as Moon Knight is definitely not a copycat Batman, but that's a rant for another day. And, of course, erasing the ID representation. Think about it the same way as weight washing or making canon LGBT plus characters straight to things that are definitely not okay. Again, this is not to say you can't write whatever you want. Just consider why you are writing separate bodies fic for a group of characters who don't like being separate and who are part of a very specific minority that gets little to no god rep. And if you write separate bodies fic for the love of Konshu, tag it like that, so that people who don't want to read them, so that people who don't want to read them separate can skip your fic. And speaking of bad reps to system, let's go to point number two. One very, very tried trope that comes up about every single time that DAD appears in media is the evil altar. 
from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, although one could argue that they are not quite a system, but that's not the point here, to split, the evil altar lurking in the innocent system psyche is a very constant trope. In comics, in particular, it is always brought up to cause drama because the villain is inside the hero and things like that. Or the even if the altar is heroic, it's always more violent and more savage than the poor innocent altar that doesn't know what the other is doing. Yes, I am looking at you, Rose and the Thorn. Moon Knight was always different because most of the time, and when the writers weren't being ableist, there is no evil altar. Actually, there is never actual an evil, what we will call evil altar. And while one can argue that one of them is more violent than the others in certain runs of the comic, again, in a very ableist and classist way, as they choose the working man altar to be called the violent one, because of course the working class one is the violent one, not the mercenary who has an actual body count, <clears throat> I digress. The producers of the show were very clear that no, there is no evil altar in Moon Knight. Or to spell it very, very clearly, Jake Lockley is not evil nor a violent murderer. Yes, I feel very strongly about this. The divide between Mark, Stephen and Jake is very clear. Stephen is the emotional protector, while Jake is the physical protector. How do we know this? Simple. The times when Jake pop up is only when the body is in mortal danger and neither Mark nor Stephen are able to get it out of it. Jake's come out, fixes the situation, and goes out again. This, unfortunately, sometimes includes killing people. But he is not a serial killer who wants to kill everything around. If he was, first, there would be a lot more bodies when Mark comes around to in the friendly type, and second, the guys will have a lot more blackouts as an evil alter would take every chance to come out and create chaos, and would leave no survivors. Remember the teen who kills himself? He wouldn't have been left alive if Jake was as violent as Fanon wants to make him. The last proof that Jake is evil, at least from the people who insist on this, is that the end he apparently killed two nurses before killing Harrow. And yes, I said apparently. We see them in the floor with blood near their heads, but that doesn't make them dead in a TV series. Unfortunately, for TV series, especially TV series based on comic books, we need the old he's dead Jim check. As long as we don't see that, they can be badly hurt and unconscious, which, given that they are in a hospital, is not that bad, as long as someone finds them in time. Also, we don't know if they are innocent, given that the last time we saw Harrow before that scene, he was being rescued from Moon Knight by his surviving cult members. Capturing Amit didn't destroy the whole cult, which we knew had a lot of people in high places, so it's not a big leap to assume that those nurses were part of the cult that, I remind you, tried to do a second snap, which is the nice MCU way to call a genocide. The same goes about killing Haru. Not only it was the only way to make sure that Amit would never be freed again, and thus would never enact her own snap, let's remember, Haru killed their body. This is why Jake shoots him twice, one for Mark, one for Steven. He doesn't torture Harrow. He doesn't make it especially painful. He just enacts just revenge. And let's remember, Konshu is also the god of vengeance as well as the god of justice, even if some writers forget he is the god of justice. So any theories about how Jake is evil, be it because he killed a wannabe genocidal cult leader, or because he's apparently more violent than Mark, and yes, again, apparently, Let's be honest, Mark is a former mercenary while Jake is a taxi driver. Who do you think has a bigger body count even before Konshu? Are rooted in the idea that because Jake is the least civilized, aka the working class, and in the series the most obviously Latin American, as he is the only one we hear speaking Spanish even when all the specters are playing by Latin American actors, so of course, poor 
and uneducated, both of those with quotes, becomes, again, quotes, violent and dangerous, which, when you put it that way, is incredibly racist, isn't it? It's the same as only casting Latin American actors to be narcos. And by the way, I am not stretching anything. That, the fact that he is working class, is the actual rationale that one writer used in the comics to make Jake the most violent of the altars. Because he hung out with the worst of humanity. A.K.A. a diner owner and a homeless man. Wow, the dredge of humanity, the classism was dripping out of that run. Again, I digress. Jake didn't kill Randall Spector. He didn't even exist back then. Jake didn't kill Wendy Spector. The show would have told us something that important. The only thing Jake did to the serving called the violent one was being a mystery and stay working with Konshu, even if he had no choice on that matter. Stephen only negotiated his own and Mark's freedom. Remember, Conscious says, I will free the two of you. Mark's original deal included Jake, and Jake is not freed by Stephen's new deal. In the same vein, we get to number three. The system aren't crazy, nor broken. That is the whole point of the series when we dig deep on it, as well as the comic arc that inspired it. The Lemire arc, which I can sing enough praises about, and at the same time I hate that I can't get the TPB because it has become so popular now. Double-edged sword. And the current comic arc, written by McKay. Calling them crazy, besides being incredibly ableist, is actually trying to blame all their issues on their condition, when in fact, every trauma that the system has, both in the series as in the comics, stem from outside agents or decisions each alter made, but not their condition itself. Mark has a horrible self-esteem and suicidal ideation, but that is not because he has the ID. It is because his family life was terrible when growing up and his mother constantly told him that he deserved to die. Stephen doesn't see his own word, but that is not because he has the ID. In fact, Mark is the first person to tell him he's worth everything, but because no one outside the system seems to see Stephen as a person. That is where his issues come from. And we don't know what Jake's issues are in the MCU, and in the comics he is the most leveled ahead of the system, but I am willing to bet that if there is a problem, it is an outside one. So the solution is themselves accepting each other, as it happens in the last episode between Stephen and Mark, not to separate them, not to integrate them, and much more importantly, not getting rid of any of them. And if we love Moon Knight as a character, then we should also love them as a system, because that's what makes them special and different from other heroes. Once again, there is a divide that we must see between fandom works and canon works. Of course, writing fanfic or drawing fan art of the Moon Knight system in separate bodies, or of Jake as the evil one complete with red eyes, is not going to make the series or the comic give the guys separate bodies or make Jake evil. Hell, even in the run where they say that Jake was the worst, Jake was actually portrayed as a very kind and heroic man, so uh, yeah, take that as you will. However, it helps popularize harmful myths about the ADN systems, especially when, again, there is very little representation for them that doesn't include the evil alter idea especially not in popular media where the whole enemy within trope is so ingrained that the second that you say a character has the ID, someone will inevitably ask, who is the evil alter? And of course, given the guy's separate bodies pretty much goes hand in hand with the idea that neurodivergent people must be treated to become neurotypical and that only singlets can live a happy life. So before you do add to that pile, stop and think about why you want to do it. And if you decide to do it, well, just tag. That way people who don't want to read that kind of tropes can avoid them. I want to thank my DI patrons, Mitch Hyman, Elaine Ho, Jessica, and Ellie Riley, as well as my first supporter, Tanya Pineda, and Amy Song, who is the greatest human being in the planet, and without whom these videos would not be possible. 
I also want to remind you that if you want to support these and my other projects and get your name mentioned here, you can do so at patreon.com slash Adalisa, written link on the description in my link tree because I know my name can be hard to spell. And with just one USD a month, you will always be thanked in my videos as well as get access to a ton of art before anyone else. Or you can support me once at Coffee, also linked on my link tree, and you will get mentioned in my next video. If you can't support me this way, I also accept likes, subscriptions to the channel, comments so that the algorithm catches engagement, and of course, you sharing the links. I will also welcome all your questions, feedbacks, and suggestions in the comments below.